PR Connections Radio presents Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian McKelly. And on this edition of Vegas Hockey Hub, we're going to be going over a retrospective. We're going to be looking back as we have done this in the past. In fact, we are actually doing a follow-up to what we did last year as we are going to be looking back six years later, looking back at the 2018 NHL Draft and how it affected your Vegas Golden Knights. Because as your host, Ian Rickelli, I've always found it really interesting and fascinating how as years go by, how did a draft how did a draft class improve? How did they grow? And more importantly, for an organization like the Vegas Golden Knights, look, 2017, we did a retrospective on that one last year. We know what the 2017 draft ended up happening. You had Nick Suzuki, you had Cody Glass, you had Nick Haig, Eric Brandstrom. We know what the 2017 draft class has become over time. But what we don't know is about the 2018 NHL draft because there is one important name from 2018 who is a Stanley Cup champion with your Vegas Golden Knights. Then there were a few trades and a few moves that benefited your Vegas Golden Knights. This is not going to be a trade tree. I'm not Steve Dangle. I'm not trying to steal his job. But when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights in the 2018 NHL draft, that's what we're looking back at today. So for this episode of Vegas Hockey Hub, we are looking back at the 2018 NHL draft six years later and Has it affected Vegas? And what did it do for Vegas six years later? Of course, we have to get into the first round pick that the Vegas Golden Knights had. And I will give you some context on what you're seeing down here. As the Vegas Golden Knights, they had the 31st pick in the 2018 NHL Draft. The reason why is because your Vegas Golden Knights had been in the Stanley Cup Finals against Washington in the 2018 Stanley Cup Finals. So your Vegas Golden Knights had the second-to-last pick in the first round. In fact, they had the second-to-last pick in majority of this draft. There's two exceptions, but we'll talk about that later. And with this first-round pick in 2018, the Vegas Golden Knights didn't even have it on draft night in Dallas. As a matter of fact, they traded it away during the 2018 NHL trade deadline. As your Vegas Golden Knights would call it the Detroit Red Wings and draft and pick up Thomas Tatar. And when it comes to Thomas Tatar, he was a solid forward. He was going to be a middle six guy. He was a solid member of Detroit. And the Vegas Golden Knights had to give up a first round pick in that situation in order to get Thomas Tatar. But what I found really fascinating about this pick is that the Vegas Golden Knights, yeah, they gave up a few more assets in the deal to get Thomas Tatar. But what something a lot of people don't mention and something that a lot of people fail to to, men- to forget is that when it came to the Vegas Golden Knights and it came to the trade itself for Thomas Tatar, they also gave up a second round pick in 2019 they gave up a mid a mid round pick in 2021. So your Vegas Golden Knights did not give up any players for Thomas Tatar, but they gave up this first round pick in 2018. They gave up a second round pick in 2019. And don't worry about it. Next year, when we also do a retrospective, we're probably going to do the same thing and look at what that second round pick became in 2019. Just like we did last year in 2017, we're doing this year with 2018. So when it came to your Vegas Golden Knights, when it came to getting to Tar, how did he do for Vegas? Well, he only played in about 28 games, playoffs and regular season combined, and only had eight 
points for Vegas. And the Vegas Golden Knights would end up shipping Tatar to Montreal. We all know about that trade. I've talked about it plenty of times on this channel. That was a trade when Nick Suzuki and Tatar went to Montreal. We got Max Patch ready. We've already talked about that enough. So what ended up happening with this first round pick? Well, Joseph Foligno was the first round pick taken with this selection by Detroit. Now, he has actually become a mainstay in Detroit. He has become an everyday player in Detroit. As a matter of fact, last year, he actually had a 20-point season on the bottom six for Detroit. And over the last four seasons, he has been a member of Detroit. He has become a steady hand as he has played around 200 games in the NHL at this point in his career. So overall... You know, Vegas, in hindsight, yes, we technically traded a first, a second, a third, Nick Suzuki, and Tatar to get Max Patch ready. But what Detroit got in this was a valuable player who has now 200 games under his belt as a NHLer. So it benefited Detroit, and Vegas was trying to win a Stanley Cup. It's why the deal was made. So Detroit benefited from Vegas's 2018 first round pick. But at the end of the day, I understand why Vegas did it. Vegas wanted to win a Stanley Cup, and they thought that Tatar was going to be a reason for it. Now, the second round. The second round for your Vegas Golden Knights, they would have the 60, 61st pick in the 2018 NHL draft. And your Vegas Golden Knights would end up selecting a Russian from the KHL. Ivan Morozov, who is from the KHL. Now, this is a guy who was really interesting as technically the top pick that your Vegas Golden Knights had in the 2018 NHL draft in Dallas that year. And when it came to Ivan, you know, he was playing for Team Russia in the World Junior Championships. He's playing for the under-18 team. This was a guy who was really trying to show himself and, and really – plant himself as a good member in Russia. He was already having a cup of coffee in the KHL when he was drafted by Vegas. But what was interesting about Ivan is that he spent four more seasons playing in the KHL. So 2018 when he got drafted, and then 2019, 2020, and finally 2021. So when it came to Ivan, it took a while for him to transition. It took a while for him to eventually earn his spot here in North America and coming over from the KHL and playing in North America. And unfortunately for your Vegas Golden Knights, Ivan Morozov did not ever play for your Vegas Golden Knights. He never laced up his skates in the NHL and skate around as an official member of the Vegas Golden Knights. But what he did do was play a few seasons in the Henderson Silver Knights organization as he had to have a cup of coffee in 2021. He only played a couple of games after being sent over to North America, but he would play an entire season in Henderson in 2022, and he did okay. All right, He had seven goals and about 18 points in his full-time season playing in Henderson. But what was interesting about Ivan Morozov is that in 2023, he would be sent back to the KHL by the Vegas Golden Knights. So he would then be sent back to where he was before. And currently at this present moment in time, they actually look and examine what he has done at this present moment. He is back in the KHL playing for Moscow this season. So your Vegas Golden Knights, their second round pick is not even with the Golden Knights organization in the AHL or NHL as he is now back with Moscow in the KHL. So he went from playing with St. Petersburg, with Sochi out there in the KHL to now being sent back and now playing for Moscow. So when it came to Ivan Morozov, this was somebody who I really thought had some potential 
And considering his size and considering the fact that he was someone who was a goal scorer in the KHL, I really thought that maybe he would step up and actually do a little bit better than he did in uh in in, in, in they did in the AHL. So unfortunately, this was their top pick that year, and he just really didn't pan out with the NHL. He didn't pan out for Vegas. And like I said before, he is now back in the KHL in out there in Russia. Now, the third round pick that the Vegas Golden Knights had was traded away on expansion draft night. As during the 2017 NHL expansion draft, the Vegas Golden Knights would send their 2018 third round pick to the Minnesota Wild, but they got back a really good player by giving up that pick. As they would acquire Alex Tuck as a conditional player during the expansion draft. Because anybody who doesn't remember, they selected Eric Halla as their pick from Minnesota, but then they got Alex Tuck as a conditional player, but they had to give up a third round pick to get him. So Alex Tuck became one of the best players the Vegas Golden Knights had on the middle six for a couple of years. And Alex Tuck became a mainstay for Vegas. Over the uh, selected time period that Alex Tuck was in Vegas, he was showing potential. He was showing upside. He was showing that he could be a solid everyday member of your Vegas Golden Knights. But it wouldn't last for long. As everyone knows by everyone knows by now, Alex Tuck would be the key piece, the vital part, the main piece in the Jack Eichel deal. Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, first round pick, they would be sent to the Buffalo Sabres for a superstar in Jack Eichel. And Alex Tuck has not done a bad job in Buffalo. In fact, you could say that he has actually become a solid member of the Buffalo Sabres top six. He has become a vital part of their offense in Buffalo as he averaged over a point per game in the most recent season in Buffalo. And he scored around 40 goals for the first time in his career in the NHL. So for Alex Tuck, you got four solid seasons out of Alex Tuck by giving up this third round pick. Now the Minnesota wild would select Connor Dewar and he was a, you know, he's an okay guy in Minnesota. You know, Connor Dewar, if you actually look at his stats in Minnesota, he's done okay. Um, he has been somebody who, when you look at his draft, you actually see what he has done. And considering he was drafted with the 92nd overall pick, which is what Vegas would have had, he has played the past four seasons for Minnesota. He has played around 200 games at this point. But he has been a middle six guy. He has been scoring around 15, 20 points every year for Minnesota. But considering he has played around 200 games for Minnesota Wild, I would look at it as a win for Vegas because you got Alex Tuck and then you trade him for Jack Eichel. He's been a superstar, one of the best players the Vegas Golden Knights have had. And then Minnesota gets a bottom six forward and someone who has played around 200 games in the NHL in Dewar. So overall in this draft, you really have to break it down. So the first round pick was sent to Detroit to try to get Thomas Tatar. Second round pick was drafted to get Ivan Morozov. He goes to the KHL after only playing two seasons in Vegas for the Henderson Silver Knights. And then you traded their third round pick to get a talent in Alex Tuck during the expansion draft. And speaking of trading for guys during the expansion draft, the fourth round pick that the Vegas Golden Knights would have during the 2018 NHL draft, they would send it to the Florida Panthers. But who they got from, the, from Florida was a massive deal. As the 2017 NHL expansion draft, they would select Jonathan Marchessault, but they would take a fourth round pick and deal it to Florida, and you would get Riley Smith. Now, Riley Smith, we already know what he did for Vegas. His six seasons playing in Vegas 
He was a vital part of this team. He was a first line mate for five years. He was part of the 1971-81 line, and he would win a Stanley Cup as a member of your Vegas Golden Knights. So no doubt about it, the Florida Panthers giving up Riley Smith, sacrificing a fourth-round pick was good for Vegas because they ended up getting a guy who would win a Stanley Cup for your Vegas Golden Knights. They ended up giving up somebody who would become a key member of the offense in Vegas. And when it came to who Florida selected, Jack Gornick, this was a guy who unfortunately has not played in the NHL, as he has actually only played one season of professional hockey, and that is in the ECHL. So Florida did not get much out of this fourth round pick, but Vegas definitely did by getting Riley Smith. But Vegas wasn't done in the fourth round, as actually the second pick they would use in the fourth round is the most important one. As during the 2017 NHL expansion draft, when the Vegas Golden Knights would select Jason Garrison, they would get a package from Tampa Bay in order to select Jason Garrison. Not only would they get Nikita Gusev, who we've talked about on the show before, they traded him to New Jersey, but they would actually get a fourth round pick from Tampa for the 2018 NHL draft. And in that 2018 NHL draft, with the 115th pick in the 2018 NHL draft, they would select the Michigan-born Paul Cotter. And Paul Cotter is an interesting story for Vegas because after being selected by Vegas in 2018, one year later in 2019, he would move over to professional hockey, play his first season for the Vegas Golden Knights AHL team, and he would actually put up some reasonable stats in year one. He would have nine points in his debut season. Year two for Henderson, he would actually step it up a bit and have five goals and 16 points in his second season in 2020. But 2021 is where the breakout season for Paul Cotter would end up happening. As Paul Cotter in 2021 for Henderson would have 20 goals in 59 games, rack up 62 penalty minutes. He's a guy who likes to drop the gloves. And more importantly, when it came to Paul Cotter, this is a guy who in 2021, 2022, he would actually earn his first ever debut with the Vegas Golden Knights. As on November 9th, 2021, against Seattle, he would actually make his NHL debut. A few days later, he would score his first NHL goal against Minnesota. So Paul Cotter would have a cup of coffee in the Vegas Golden Knights organization in 2021-2022 in the NHL. He'd only play a couple of games. But it was his statistics, it was his stats in Henderson that put him on the map. It was the fact that he had a 20-goal campaign in the AHL. It was the fact that he had three points in six playoff games in the AHL is what eventually earned him a roster upgrade and actually would get a promotion to the Vegas Golden Knights for the entire 2022 season. And Paul Cotter would make a statement in Vegas as in 55 games in 2022, he would have 18 points, but 13 of them being goals. So he had over a dozen goals for your Vegas Golden Knights in 55 games. But more importantly for Paul Cotter, despite not playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs, he would actually earn enough games in the regular season to actually earn a Stanley Cup final and become a Stanley Cup champion for your Vegas Golden Knights. So for the young Paul Cotter, who I wasn't even 24 yet by the time of this by the time of this recording. Paul Cotter would end up as a Stanley Cup champion and would end up 
as a vital piece of your Vegas Golden Knights on the bottom six, on the middle six, during the 2022 season. And for the 2023-2024 season, Paul Cotter has become a second-line, third-line guy, a solid winger for Vegas. He has been on the same line as William Carlson, as Michael Amadio. He has even been a few games with Chandler Stevenson, Mark Stone. Paul Cotter, if it's done correctly, could be a key piece of the future for the Vegas Golden Knights. And I actually will put this on record, that considering what Paul Cotter has done early on in his career, do not be surprised if when contract extensions happen, he will be given a second contract for the Vegas Golden Knights. So unlike Ivan Morozov, who went back to Russia after his first contract was up, I say that Paul Cotter will end up getting that extension from the Vegas Golden Knights because he deserves it after what he has done on his rookie deal. Now, getting past the first four rounds, the fifth round is actually kind of underwhelming when you stop and think about it. The fifth round, Vegas Golden Knights had two selections in this draft. Now, how would they have two picks in the fifth round, you might ask? Great question. I will explain it to you. Now, the first pick they had in the fifth round was given to Vegas when they traded Marcus Kruger to Carolina um, after the 2017 NHL expansion draft. Vegas Golden Knights were giving up Marcus Kruger. He was sent to Carolina, and they were given an extra fifth round pick. And that was selected on Brandon Cruz. Now, Brandon Cruz has unfortunately not uh, made an NHL debut. He has actually not even been anywhere near an NHL roster as he is currently playing in the ECHL and he is not even an active member of the Golden Knights organization. So for Brandon Cruz, unfortunately, just didn't pan out. He can't do it for every single pick, unfortunately. But that was who they took in the fifth round. Now, the defenseman and Connor Cochran. This was a guy who actually played a little bit for the Henderson Silver Knights. He actually was in the NHA and the AHL, the ECHL for a while for Vegas. But this past season, he was let go and he actually would become an ECHL player for um, a different team. So when it came to Cruz, when it came to Connor Cochran, this was someone. This is somebody who just has unfortunately not panned out in Vegas. They're somewhere else in the ECHL playing double-A hockey. Now, getting over to the sixth round for Vegas, they would actually have two picks in the sixth round as well. Don't worry, I will explain how this happened. So, the first six-round pick, that was Peter Dilavatore. This was a guy who they acquired from the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is originally their pick. They got this in exchange for Calvin Pickard. So Calvin Pickard, who they drafted during the 2017 NHL expansion draft, he was being dealt to Toronto, and they got a six-round pick in exchange for him. And when it came to Peter, he unfortunately only spent a couple of seasons with the Golden Knights organization before joining the AHL and actually has become a good everyday player in the AHL with the with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I will say when it comes to Peter, he is somebody that, yes, I understand that he did not make it to the NHL. But as a six-round pick, the fact that he is with an AHL team, he's played for the, the Wilts Bears, Scranton Penguins, he has actually played for the Wheeling Nailers of the ECHL. This is a guy who has earned an everyday roster spot, and I'm happy to see it in the AHL for Peter. And then when it came to Xavier Bouchard, this was also another defenseman that the Vegas Golden Knights took. This was their actual six-round pick that they had in this situation. But when it came to Xavier, he actually plays in the AHL as well, but unfortunately, it is not for Vegas. As when it comes to Xavier, he is now an active member of the Milwaukee Admirals of 
the Nashville Predators. So Xavier goes to Nashville. He's in the AHL playing for them. For Peter, he has now been playing out there in Pittsburgh for the Wilts Bears, Scranton Penguins. So for the Vegas Golden Knights, they did get some value in the sixth round. They did get some AHL level caliber players in the sixth round. Just unfortunately not for Henderson, but for a different team. And then the seventh round, the final the final round for your Vegas Golden Knights, they actually traded this away to Carolina. The Carolina Hurricanes, they actually made a draft swap, and the Vegas Golden Knights would actually get Jake LeCision. And this was a guy who was in the AHL. He even played a few games in the NHL for Vegas before they flipped him to New York Rangers on waivers back in 2022-2023. So your Vegas Golden Knights, they actually only ended up having six picks during the 2018 NHL draft. You had Ivan Morozov. He is now in the KHL playing for Moscow. Your fourth round pick ended up becoming Paul Cotter, who is an active member and an everyday starter here in Vegas. Brandon Cruz, he ended up going to the ECHL. He's playing somewhere else. Connor Cochran, he ended up going somewhere else. He is in the ECHL as we speak. And then the six-round picks was Peter Debilitore. He is now playing for the Wilts Bear Scranton Penguins. And Xavier Bouchard is playing for the Milwaukee Admirals in the AHL. So for your Vegas Golden Knights, to really recap this in a simple way, they got an NHL-level player in Paul Cotter. They had gotten a guy who went back to Russia in Morozov. You had two AHL-level caliber players in Debil Torre and Bouchard, and two ECHL players in Cruz and Cochran. And if you really want to break it down, and you actually want to do it this way, and I'm going to, they also had two picks that they flipped to get Alex Tuck, and to get Riley Smith. So for your Vegas Golden Knights, the 2018 NHL draft, six years later, this was a draft that was impactful for Vegas, but you have to look at it behind the surface. Okay, you have to look at it from a much bigger point of view than just the picks and the, just the picks themselves. So when it comes to Vegas, when it comes to 2018 NHL draft, the main player that you got out of this was Stanley Cup champion Paul Cotter. And this was the 2018 NHL draft. Looking back at it six years later, and I want to say to everyone watching all around the world, go to PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. Check out all of the amazing content we have on there. We have about a dozen shows on the network, including Vegas Hockey Hub and if you also want to follow them on social media, they are at PR Connections Radio or just at PR Connections. They have a YouTube channel, so if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, it would help us out a lot. And if you want to follow Vegas Hockey Hub, we upload uh, exclusive content on our YouTube channel. We do game recaps. We do Vegas Hockey Hub shorts. There is a lot of good content that is being uploaded onto the network. So go to at Vegas Hockey Hub. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We are everywhere at Vegas Hockey Hub. And if you want to follow me on social media, I am right down here at Ian J. Rakelli. And until next time, I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. Continue watching hockey. Go support junior hockey and go Knights. Go.
Star Connections Radio thanks you for watching this podcast. Check out more episodes of this show and our others at prconnectionsradio.com.